you see there? All right, so starting up round four. Saying not to turn off on it. So here I'm just explaining more how he doesn't want me turning on that hook, but rather to come straight in. When ties show you what you're doing wrong, they exaggerate it in this beautiful way. They show you exactly what you're doing wrong, but in this way that makes you look like a total idiot. So you really see, you really see what you're doing wrong. They're so brilliant at it. So angle your hook up a little bit when you're doing a body dig. There he has me stepping straight in again. So again, the, the hook should actually change angle between when you're doing a body hook versus a hook to the head. Um, to the body is a little bit up, and then when you come up to the head, your thumb, the way he likes it, your thumb should be facing yourself. Working on that long guard again. So you don't stay in the long guard for a really long time. You basically stop someone with it and then attack with that double impact. If you stay in it for too long, someone can actually just like shove your arms off and you end up being in a vulnerable situation. But as a stop and then attack position, it's pretty impenetrable. You see when he's working with me on it and there's a little miscommunication of whether he's walking forward or I'm walking forward. Um, it's very hard to move into it without getting hurt, so he keeps hesitating. There, I couldn't get my hop across. He's very patient. He says it's okay. Here I start to explain to him that my problem is the distance. That after I've elbowed, I feel like I'm way too close and I can't get that hop across. So he's showing how you transition from punching and step in with that and that when you elbow someone, they're probably going to stagger backwards, so they create the space for you. He's showing me how that knocks you backwards. And when someone is staggering backwards and you hit him in the leg, it is so nasty. Yeah, don't go backwards when you get kicked in the thigh. That guy's our timekeeper on the ring there. So he's saying don't lift your foot and hook at the same time. You don't want your foot up off the ground while you're dragging it. You'll have more power. So as you're moving forward and as you hit, it's the same, like leap forward and slam the pad right as your feet are planting. You don't want to leave your foot back and you definitely don't want it off the ground. On the drive home, I was commenting about how his pad work is both fast and slow at the same time. His combinations are really fast, and then there's time in between to kind of set up and um, figure out where your shots are going to be, which is pretty accurate for fights, but what's really amazing about it is he makes you feel like such a badass when you're doing your pad work. It feels so good to do pad work with him. There we go. That distance helps a lot. My foot's still not coming far enough outside of him, but I'm still able to get pretty good torque on it with that hop over. So he's tolerated how much he hates my switch kick for four rounds now. He's starting to, he's starting to correct me on it. My left foot comes back too deep. 
And he says that I don't come over to the side of him enough. You come over just a very little bit, but your right leg is stepping outside of his. So here he's correcting both things. He wants, upon the switch, when you step with your right, it has to come a little bit outside of him. And you don't want your left foot, which is going back, to go back too deeply. Because A, you lose distance. And B, it takes too long. They're going to see that you're about to kick, and they can just keep you or attack you or move. So there, I'm still going too deep. His switch kick is very, very quick. When I laugh like that, it's because my uh, my punch kind of like slips off of the pad a little bit. My angle is off. What do you see there? So I step out the left. On the left kick, I'm right in the but middle of to explain a little bit. So there's not as much power. It just has to be out a little bit. Mm. And then my problem with the elbow leading into the leg kick was like, not moving yet. All right, here we're going into round five. So again, he's showing that that deep step, you lose distance and it's too slow. His step is so shallow, but it's so quick. And because he's coming forward with that right leg, you're closing more distance, so you're going to get a lot of power on it, even though you're not doing a really deep step. The reason you do the deep step is to create that distance between your legs so that you have back power from your back leg. But he does the shallow step and then steps forward with his right, which gives you that same power without losing distance. He's saying to um, close my hip a little bit, which means turn over. <laughs> he's, he's irritated by uh, my hand that I throw for torque. It stops at the same level that my leg is at, which means there's too much tension in it. He wants it to be really loose. The relaxation in that arm is what allows more torque in the leg, which is what allows more power and speed. See how far back his goes. It's like he's throwing it behind him. That helps your hip turn over as well. <laughs> he wasn't expecting that deep. So he has me start working on teeps based on that. He says when you see the feet going, that's when you teep. Basically showing me that how slow I was doing my switch step before is exactly what allows me to be able to teep them. So I, I do it a lot in this video and it's actually not being corrected, but you can see how far 
forward my forearm is on that upward elbow that he has before the kick. Um, my hand should be much closer to my head. It should be smoothing back my hair, basically, uh, to keep it much tighter. It's a mistake that I'm that I'm making that's not being corrected. It's not a huge deal, but it's uh, if you're going for perfect form, you need to adjust that. I need to adjust that. There, I'm not stepping out again, so he's, he's telling me to get my foot outside his foot. If you keep your leg in the middle like that, you can't you can't get the hip to turn over the way he wants it to. Oh, this is so great. So he's like, do what Kudam does. And he just breaks it down into tiny little pieces for me. So first you move the left foot back, you just kind of scrape it along the ground, and then you step with the right. Small. So a little chicken scratch back. Step forward to the right. So you don't lift your foot. It actually hides the kick really, really well too. The, the switch is very unnoticeable, which he says later on makes it really good for a head kick as well. I'm not used to it yet. It doesn't come out really. This is also really great because that, that kick is coming off of punches. So someone might be moving back and you just need to close that distance. If someone's going to stand right in front of you, whatever. But if you punch punch, usually they're not going to be standing right there. So you'll see he changes his distance and then I can follow him with that smaller step. There, that's the higher kick right after. Yeah, that's brilliant. He's shortened the... Uh, you don't even like hop the whole way, you actually just shuffle this one back and then step. Explaining that small little scratch. Oh, it's very fast. There, he's trying to step out better. So pretty. Thank you.